My name is Adam Wells. The year I turned 26, I had raised $89 million, which really pissed me off because it was 11 shy of what I needed. Unlike other forms of sales where you're selling a tangible product or solution, fundraising is all about selling yourself and your intellectual capital. There are many different considerations when thinking about the pre-pitch and discovery process. The first is how you brand your fund and the scope of your investments. Branding can be done through typical marketing, but even more powerful in venture capital is branding through your reputation. When you first start out, this can be difficult, but a quick way to do so is becoming a thought leader and publishing articles on the space that you invest in. In addition to this, you can host industry events to network and become well known in the industry. In addition to this, Another quick way to grow, and grow your reputation specifically, is by bringing in successful investors either as partners or as members on an advisory board. The second step of branding is defining the scope of your investments. Typically funds will seek to target niche markets where their expertise can add value, whether that be in wearables, the internet of things, or other industries. With this, you also need to understand the stage at which you'll, you'll typically invest in startups. This can range from seed funding to start the company off to only investing in more established startups looking to expand their business. Wherever it is you decide to invest, you have to be able to explain why your team specifically has a competitive advantage and will be able to consistently succeed. After positioning your fund, you need to start working your network. You have to understand how you can add value to the funds that the LPs you're pitching are already investing in. Knowing their buy-in process and their evaluation criteria is one of the most crucial steps in the process and can be done by leveraging your network and reaching out to other funds that they have invested in. Furthermore, understanding where you fit in their por portfolio, whether you allow them to vi diversify or are in line with their bet on financial tech, can allow you to understand potential solutions you can offer going into the pitch. Now that you've conducted pre-pitch preparation, discovery, and networking, it's time to understand your investors' needs and pitch yourself as well as your investing team for the first time. The first step is to build a rapport. At the beginning of your pitch, it is important to communicate an image of confidence that communicates success and professionalism to the investor. Once you have built a rapport at the beginning of your pitch, it is also important to understand the type of information that the investor is required. For example, High net worth individuals typically require less due diligence and rely more on intellectual curiosity compared to an institutional investor who has a more standardized process. Each investor will have a unique preference for information and you must be sure to deliver the pitch according to those needs. The second step of the pitch is to understand the investor's return expectations. After building an initial rapport, you must identify the investor's risk tolerance and expected return metrics so that you can tailor your pitch to their unique needs. Once you have a strong understanding of which sectors they are interested in and the types of investment vehicles they prefer, you can begin to sell accordingly. The third step is to build credibility and sell yourself. Unlike other forms of sales, Pitching an investor to raise money for a venture capital fund requires you to sell yourself. The most important aspect of selling yourself is to build credibility through a previous track record of investing success of generating superior returns. Additionally, you will need to highlight your past work experience, expertise, reputation, and networks. The fourth and final step of the pitch is branding and the close. In order to build a brand for your fund, it is important to clearly communicate a differentiated and contrarian investment strategy. Investors will not buy into your fund unless they see the potential for superior returns. Additionally, you must explain which stage of the investment process your, your fund will focus on, i.e. the early stage, expansion capital, or late stage, and you must explain which sectors or market niches your fund will target. You must leave the investor with a sense of strong risk management capabilities and the ability to select outstanding undervalued companies. I'm thinking of rejecting it, Adam. As a general partner, you have to be ready for almost any and every outcome. And unfortunately, one very real possibility is rejection. 
Here are three main types of objections you may encounter. The first is that the process issues are largely out of control. So this could mean that the funds of funds were between their own funding cycle, so they just didn't have any money to invest at the time. Your process is moving too quickly, or your fund is just too small. Another common issue is that I know there's someone else that's a good investor out there, but I don't really know much about you right now. This is an issue that VCs that are just starting out may encounter, and most of the time there's nothing you can really do about it. One suggestion would be to try to shift the idea of success to other aspects other than just money. But despite all this, you still have to be ready to face the issue until you get a good track record going. And lastly, sometimes I just don't buy your thesis or ability to execute. Again, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. But don't always look at it as a bad thing. If anything, you should be worried if every person you talk to is overly enthusiastic. You should take the feedback you receive in order to improve your pitch, processes, and thinking for the future. I thought Adam had a great presentation, and I'm very interested in his proposal. If you're fortunate enough to receive an initial acceptance and positive reaction from your counterparts, you must now be prepared to move forward in pursuing a deal. Typically, the limited partner will now conduct due diligence and background research in order to confirm the validity of your fund. This research can include, but is not limited to, reference calls, analyzing fund documents, and confirming the fund's legal structure. The length of this due diligence often depends on who the limited partner is. For high net worth individuals and ultra high net worth individuals, deals are often predicated on the basis of relationships. Therefore, their research is fairly short and can typically be completed in under six months. Institutional money managers complete much more due diligence, often estimated at roughly one year long, while the process for corporate sponsors is incredibly meticulous, often lasting up to two years. While this research is happening, the general partner needs to leverage the positive initial relationship with their champion in order to further the buying process. This often includes meeting with a larger investment team and gaining a committee approval of the investment. This lead limited partner will then drop legal documents and investment details will be finalized. Standard terms are based upon a 2% management fee, with 80% of returns going to the limited partner and 20% going back to the fund. To summarize, fundraising as a venture capitalist requires you to sell yourself. The sales cycle typically follows a three-step process. First is the pre-pitch and discovery, where you define the scope of your fund, build your network, and choose the right partners. Second is the pitch. Build a rapport with your potential investor, understand their risk tolerance and expected returns, and sell yourself through a previous track record of investing, past work experience, expertise, and intellectual capital. Last, be prepared to handle common objections and understand the buying process post-acceptance. It's time to go raise millions. So now we're going to move on to the frequently asked questions section. So first, what is the most common issue that GPs run into and how do they address it? The struggle a lot of GPs face when fundraising is a potential LP holding out. It is only once you're guaranteed to be investing before they want to take out their checkbook and commit capital for the next 5-10 to 10 years. The only real option to overcome this is to nudge them to qu towards closing while continuing the sales process with other leads in your pipeline. The next question is, what's more important to the fundraising process, past track record or network? Whenever you talk with an institutional investor, they will argue both. If you dive deeper, you realize that LPs put more weight on track record. Dave Unsworth from Information Venture Partners put it best when he said, Track record speaks loudest. You're only as good as your last fund. If you had a string of good funds before a bad one, they might give you a mulligan. If you have little to no past investment experience, how do you sell yourself and your fund? If you're going out to raise your first fund, what is most important in selling yourself is highlighting your personal track record. For instance, if you were previously an entrepreneur in the fintech space, you'd want to build your brand around this. Let the prospect know that you have a deep understanding of the company's uh, the fund invests in based on operating, sales, and corporate experiences that you've had with your own company. Bake this personal history into your value proposition to really differentiate what your fund offers. What does a typical sales funnel look like for a VC? The sales funnel starts with initial contact. With this, the general partner may reach out to cold contacts, but it is best to use warm relationships already within the network. From there, it follows the process seen in the video. There's the first pitch. Afterwards, you will hand over documents and data which will be reviewed by the team at the institutional shop. 
Once the initial due diligence process is completed, the champion will bring the GP in front of the larger team to do a second pitch. The potential LP will draw up the legal documents, some negotiations take place, and the money is committed to the VC. The conversion rate is very low. Typically, a GP looking to raise $100 million will talk to 75 or more institutional investors, and 4 to 5 will end up committing capital.